Hi, goodness me, it is the 16th of April and I have no idea where the last few days have gone. They just simply slipped by and we are still under lockdown. In fact, in my town now, because we had a big spike in the number of cases a few days ago, we're in a sort of even bigger lockdown. But we're okay, we're managing, um, keeping really quite busy. Uh, the nicest thing has been catching up with people that, you know, we haven't had a good long chat with in a long time and keeping in touch with, well, all of you, most of you, because I know most of you. Um, so anyway, that's been very nice um, and I do want to go back to wrapping up this where I started with the Kerry Wiley story, but actually I'm also going to go back one step further because I'll be real honest with you, that Dylan story just kind of floored me because I had no idea that he was going to be releasing a new song and the whole coincidence of it just, yeah, it just really, really took me by surprise and it was such a lovely surprise. So going back to what I was saying about the some of the characters that came up in the Kerry Wiley story, most notably the lawyer who is defending our ex-Prime Minister. Um, and I'm guessing he must be kind of maybe, well, I'd say maybe a bit older than me, but, you know, in terms of... So I'm kind of thinking about... Is it how... A person's heart can change, how a light heart can become a dark heart. I'm, that's a very heavy thing to say, and I don't know this guy at all. I don't know him personally. I mean, he might be the nicest person in the world, but that's sort of hard to believe because he's taken on some pretty despicable cases. and. I do understand politics, it's a very, very dirty game, but it really doesn't have to be. I mean, it only is if uh, the people who go into it have not very good intentions, they, they don't have, they're not really there to serve the people, they're really there to serve themselves and you know let's face it in in Malaysia we know that just too bloody well I mean it's it's just boring now but it's not of course it's not because they're very huge implications so that was what really caught my attention when I was when I first read that story I was like wow Shafi Abdullah uh, and he was the defense lawyer in that case, and it was almost Karpal Singh, the late Karpal Singh, who was an extraordinary um, a champion of a man, really. Um, so I was thinking when I was telling the story and subsequently thinking about the story, I, I was thinking, I wonder if someone like him, or, you know, just like everybody listens to music, right? And it has different meanings for, like, we all take away different things. We can listen to the same piece of music. But let's just go back to that to the latest Bob Dylan song. And hey guys, gonna live a bit dangerously this time. I don't care about the five minutes anymore. I'm just gonna let this go because I want to finish this story and I have another one to start. So 
So the Bob Dylan song, Murder Most Foul, was, as I had said earlier, you know, it was about the assassination of JFK and it reveals so many things that about um, the USA, about American politics, but in general about, you know, that very bad and ugly side of politics and that people would go so far as ass assassinating someone who, you know, that, in my opinion, that shouldn't have happened. I think, I, I don't think anyone should be assassinated, even as much as I hate some people. I, that would not be my, my choice of um, getting rid of people. So I was thinking about, because um, I've been listening to Murder Most Foul so often, and I was thinking, I wonder, wonder let's say, maybe Shafi Abdullah loves Bob Dylan too. Maybe he, he listens to that song too. And I wonder how it affects him with what he's doing. You know, that thought just kind of crossed my mind. And it's an interesting thought. And funnily enough, um, when I was listening to Murder Most Foul, then on my YouTube feed, all these other things came up and one of them, well, a couple of things came up. One was, um, cause Bob Dylan won the Nobel Peace Prize for literature and he didn't go himself to collect it. And on his behalf, um, Patty Smith, uh, she sang a hard rain's going to fall at the ceremony. And it's an incredible um, performance, most extraordinary because, and I hope it is a spoiler, but it this happened and maybe you, some of you have already seen it and know about it. But she actually um, stumbled, she forgot the lines and then she apologized and she said, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm so nervous. And then the camera scans the audience and the audience is like, you know, kings and queens and diplomats and prime ministers and like not the kind of people I don't think who would have been going to her concerts. And, you know, she's like the queen of punk music in you know, from the early 70s in New York. So it was such an incredible moment. And it was a beautiful re rendition of that song. Um, and I was just thinking, yeah, like how it, it was so interesting to see the expressions on these people's faces. And it, it just the disconnect between the performer and the audience in some way and what happened. And then the other thing I found was, um, again, I'd not seen it before, but about a year after that, Bob Dylan finally released his essay, which I think if you, if you went, win the Nobel Peace Prize for literature, you have to do this and um, he reads it and it's also, it's just incredible. So if you're interested, I highly recommend both of those and that sort of ties up my story. And I also just want to say, I don't do links and I don't do hashtags. I think you're all very good at Google, so I don't need to do that, but that's the kind of, wrapping up of that story and hopefully we will start, I will find some time to start my next story very soon.